Hello everybody, hello, 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 hello. How are you? I'm fine. Hello, this is Catherine. How are you? I'm fine. So today I'm going to do a little bit about crime fiction writing. And as a lot of you know, I do a little bit of crime, but I do a lot of conspiracy kind of writing, which requires a lot of plot thought and leaving clues here and leaving clues there. So there's some sorts of crossovers with crime fiction. Now, why crime fiction? Why is this so important? Well, it is the biggest genre in fiction. Crime is the biggest genre in fiction. And we know this from TV programs as well as when we go to the library, there's a whole stack of books under crime fiction. So, uh, the Mighty Writing Magazine has just released its kind of crime pull-out advice section. And uh, it says, yeah, you need to get yourself familiar with crime writers. Everybody from Conan Doyle uh, to G.K. Chesterton to Agatha Christie, Raymond Chandler, even the James Bond books. Okay. And what are publishers looking for? They are looking for something new. Okay, they're looking for something new. They're looking for crime fiction that they've never seen before in the setting they've never seen before. Because as a lot of you know, crime fiction, you switch on the telly, it's in a little village. Uh, the kind of village that you just don't move into. <laughs> if it's got a murder rate of 100 in 100, you just don't move there. Um, what else? In a big old manor house like the Agatha Christie and the Poirot books, um, you just don't go to a, uh, to a country house when there's a storm. Uh, you just avoid it. But surely, oh, the, there is other places where crimes can take place. I mean, modern crime fiction on the telly, you know, visits council estates and even rich people's homes. So like we have um, Braun, the bridge, um, and we, we see beautiful houses in the woods. Uh, so yes, we're starting to find different locations now for crime, but try and think of a new setup. I have something in my head that I'm not going to share, but it is from my work background. And this is why it is important for writers to actually have a life. Philip Yancey, who I really, really, really admire. I really admire him as a writer and a thinker. Um, I don't agree with him that writers are people who stand on the sidelines and watch everybody. I don't agree with that. I, th I think people like Philip Yancey are very unique that they do stand on the sidelines and produce really good writing. But I think for the vast majority of writers, you need to live. As Ernest Hemingway said, you cannot sit down to write if you've not stood up to live. So thinking back to Roald Dahl, he was a spy. He was a fighter pilot in the Second World War. He had a lot of stuff that came out of his head and went into his books. Um, and this is what I believe. And... Um, I hope when I finish my current trilogy that I'm going to start writing crime fiction set in places that you wouldn't think murders would happen, but they do, uh, or they almost do. Okay, <laughs> I've seen from my colleagues, they almost happened. And I've read a lot in the newspapers, etc., about my kind of work background and kind of stuff that happens. So let me see. Um, detectives, if you're going to think about creating a new detective, get away from cliches, get away from cliches. We're used to people such as Sargo Norensen in Braun, in the bridge. Uh, we're used to Rebus drinking himself into an early grave, Sherlock Holmes scraping away on the violin and injecting heroin. Let's, let's get away from detectives being total screwballs and totally messed up people. Let's make this real. And this is why living in the real world as a writer is so important. You need to associate with people in order to write real characters. If you go to your local police station, believe me, the, the inspector is not going to be injecting heroin and scraping away on a violin. 
<laughs> they're, they're normal people. They are normal people. So, um, let me see. So, yeah, settings. Take it out of a village and take it out of a country mansion. Detectives, make them real people, not weird addicts. Um, and then make the plot fit together. And this is something that's been missing, I think, in recent TV dramas. I've been feeling a bit lacking, like in the fifth series of Line of Duty. Uh, I did a thing on that recently. I've just watched One of Us, which is a Scottish drama. You can see it on BBC iPlayer. And it's got some great actors in. Uh, Laura Fraser is in there. Always great to see Laura Fraser. And uh, she plays a detective, which is great. She's normal. But she's committed a crime in order to fund her daughter having cancer treatment. Mm. Again, I don't see the inspector down my local station doing that. Um, so, yeah, and I really didn't feel it. The guy who was playing her colleague, he's a good actor. He's the guy who played Colin in Rev. Uh, good actor, really good actor. Bad role, bad role. Badly written. One of us, okay, great setup. It's just like Corden in a way, the Dutch language drama from Belgium. Really good setup. A group of people who are messed up uh, from messed up backgrounds are in a situation together and they have to find their way through the situation. So it's a good setup. Um, the um, uh, a groom and bride have just been murdered and they are the son and daughter of these two families on a Scottish island. And there's a big storm and the murderer turns up uh, at their farms but injured from the storm and tree coming down on his car. So they put him in a barn and he's murdered in the night. So, uh, and then we have to figure out who did it and why. But there's no clues in the plot except for one argument. You know, and there's nothing really given away in that argument. Uh, it's just bizarre. The big reveal was just a damp squid. It was a huge disappointment because he just came out of nowhere. There was no clues in it. It was just like, it was disappointing. It was disappointing. Um, so uh, plot, yes, make sure you have your clues throughout your pl plot so that when the big da-da reveal, the reader or the watcher, the viewer, feels appreciative of it. They feel, ha ha, yes, that's it. Uh, it's a bit lacking at the moment in some TV dramas. It's a bit lacking in some books as well. Um, I did when I was at Hey on Why five, six, five years ago. I was uh, working at the Hey on Why festival and I met a writer who writes four crime novel westerns every year. He writes four books a year. And we asked him, how, how do you do it? And he says, well, it's the same plot. It's just in a different place with a different weapon. Da, 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 da. Um, and basically, it's the same book, just trotted out loads of times. Uh, if you want to do that, that is your choice. Uh, other people like to work differently. So there are very different ways of putting together a plot. But please make sure it all fits together so that your reader or your viewer doesn't feel robbed, okay? Uh, just avoid the cliches as well with your detectives and your characters. A villain isn't all bad. There is a motive, there's a reason. Everybody starts off good and then stuff happens along the way. So don't make your villains completely evil. Don't make your detectives an addict. <laughs> Um, none of us want to be cliches, so don't allow your characters to be cliches. Okay, everybody, take care. Have a good time. Bye-bye.